WTMM Mechanicville on Town Square Media Station. This is Joe Gardino, Athletic Director at Colony High School. This is Blaine Drescher, Athletic Director at CBA. And you're listening to your home for New York sports. 104.5 The Team. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Doug Brown. Game two for the Cavaliers and the Raptors tonight in Cleveland. Toronto center Jonas Valanciunas will miss tonight's game with a sprained right ankle. He hasn't played since game three against the Heat. We'll have tonight's game here on ESPN Radio starting at 7.30 Eastern. The game also on ESPN. The fifth overall pick in the NFL draft, cornerback Jalen Ramsey out of Florida State, has a small meniscus tear in his knee. No word yet how long he'll need to recover. After getting an inside tip, golfer Phil Mickelson made more than $900,000 buying stock. And today, Mickelson was named but not criminally charged in an SEC indictment on insider trading. Mickelson will return the money he made on that 2012 investment with interest. Roger Federer won't play in the French Open, which starts Sunday. Federer had left knee surgery three months ago, and he also has a recurring back injury. On the baseball scoreboard, Mariners beat the Orioles 7-2. Eighth inning in Milwaukee, Brewers lead the Cubs 4-3. Barbasol Shaving Cream. Try new Barbasol Extra Moisturizing Shaving Cream. Formulated with vitamin E and five other quality ingredients to restore and lock in moisture while you shave. Better by Barbasol. Live from ESPN headquarters in Bristol, Connecticut, it's LeVac and Wolf. On the team. Thanks to our friends in Mohawk Honda for getting us out here. We're broadcasting live from the campus. Uh, just having a blast. A lot of fun. A lot of, uh, uh, Adam yeah. Kaplan's on his way over. Yep. He was uh, he was in the middle of digging up some stuff. Uh, there are, there's some breaking news for uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, that uh, that Adam will, will bring our way. Uh, not not good news for them uh, as as well. So uh, a team that a lot of people think is going to maybe be one of the best turnaround stories in football right. could have some issues. We'll find out from, uh, Adam Kaplan when he, uh, when he comes in here in just a little bit, uh, hoops tonight. Cavs are going to win. You, you, there's no way you you give Toronto no chance. No, none at all. No, I don't. Not even the small, not even. No. Like if you woke up tomorrow and it was, Ninety one, eighty nine, Toronto. I would be. You, you just shocked. go back to sleep. I'd be shocked. You just go back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I there's. I never say never, but I, I agree with well, you that it's you not going to be easy. You can't never say never. We but. are. Uh, we are. Yeah. It, it's we're graced. Our, our man has uh, made his way over. We know he's been busy all day. We watched him burning up the phones. Uh, Adam Kaplan joining us. Adam, he just something just came through right now, didn't it? <laughs> Jaguars guys, he's there. First round pick out of Florida State. He has a meniscus tear in his knee. The, the question is whether he's going to need surgery. He's got uh, he's got a second opinion coming from uh, ne- next week with uh, Dr. James Andrews. Yeah, so, those are the words you don't want to hear connected to your first round draft pick. And I actually, ironically, I have a uh, meniscus tear in my left knee. I've had for like ten years. Very small. His is small, and I no, never the, had surgery on it. It gets that, sore, the, the, locks up a little bit once in a while. But I'm not an athlete. Right. You know, so I don't know if you, something he could play with, and we'll find out. But uh, it does get sore every once in a while. But I'll be playing golf on it this weekend. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, so I, he has no excuse now. He's got to play on it. <laughs> yeah, yes, he's yeah, getting, sure. Because he's getting I'm he's also getting, a little bit older than Jalen Ramsey. Well, he's, but you're shaming him right now, so yeah. it's all right. But but a lot of people look at Ramsey as potentially the best player in this year's draft. Could be, yeah. Um, when you look at this Jacksonville team, I've seen on your Twitter. You're a fan. You think they? You think they've got a good shot of yeah, winning? Yeah, I do. I, I like the way that Dave Caldwell, the general manager, has really built up this roster. You know, he he took over when they got there in '13. He completely turned over the roster. There are only three players remained from when they they took over three years ago. And I think they looked at it and said, "We can't win with this roster." Okay. When you do that, you need time. And he signed a five-year contract. That was important to him to get that extra year because this is this was a complete changeover. He knew that when he inherited it. Not a lot of NFL level players that you could win with. And I know from talking to the Jaguars, they feel now that they wanted to, they, they, they didn't really want to build the team for free agency, but it became a point they need to get this thing to the next level, and they did that. Uh, they've addressed about as many needs as they can. They have the quarterback, their franchise quarterback, clearly, and Blake Bortles had a breakout season, 35 passing touchdowns last season, I think another six on, on the ground. Mm-hmm. So when you have the quarterback, you just build around him. It makes right. it so much easier uh, to win football games. Uh, Adam Kaplan joining us. We're live in Bristol. Thanks to our friends at Mohawk Honda for 104.5, the team. Uh, speaking of teams looking to get to that next level, uh, we are your home for New York sports. When you look at 
all the moves the New York Giants have done in this offseason. Do you think they are uh, true players in the NFC East, or are they still uh, just outside? I think it's one of these situations where you kind of have to look at them in training camp and see how everyone's performing Mm -hmm. and then see in the preseason. They typically don't get involved with free agency. That's not the way that they built their team. But I think if you got them privately, they'd probably tell you that because they had not done as well defensively in, in the draft, they had to try a different way of going about filling out their the roster on the defensive side of the football, and they did that. They spent a lot of money on Janoris Jenkins. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the Olivier Vernon contract, seventeen million a year. I was stunned by that contract. Yeah, uh, you know the Dolphins were, didn't really make much of a push to resign him, but it's, uh, one of the uh, higher ups uh, from the Giants told me at the NFL owners meetings in March, desperate times call for desperate measures. We had to try something else. But what, here's what they wanted to do, though: they weren't signing twenty eight, twenty nine year old players. They're signing 24, 25, 26-year-old players, ascending players. Mm-hmm. That's why I like the, I like the okay. direction, but you're not going to know how they fit because when you're bringing players from other teams, you just don't know how they're going to do. They may be really talented, may right. have looked good on tape from the other team, but they come into your system, you just don't know. Uh, Adam Kaplan with us now. Um, speaking of that Giants defense, and I know this is all speculation at this point, but based on what we were able to see in a small sample size uh, and what we've heard so far in this offseason – I'm 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 cautiously optimistic about Jason Pierre-Paul this year. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean now he knows how to deal with the hand issue. Uh, the coaches know how many plays he could handle. Probably he's gonna. The question is how many snaps could he handle? I mean, that that's the thing when you don't have full use of your hand. I mean it's it's just different. I mean it's something he's got to deal with the rest of his life. But you know he could play in sub packages. He could play inside a tackle some way, like he's done in the past. But he's simply not gonna be the same player. We we all know that. But I look forward to seeing how he adjusts to this now to a 16-game season. Because remember, he missed mm-hmm. most of last season. So Tom Coughlin, yesterday, was it yesterday that he said? It was this week. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, uh, he might want to get back in the game. Do you see any place or any future for him as a head coach? Well, it's, listen, it was clear. I mean, the 49ers had interest in him. The Eagles had interest in him. He wanted a coach again. There's no doubt. I mean, heck, he couldn't even walk away from the Giants. He was around the complex earlier this year. I mean, it's even after... Uh, they parted ways, which was he shouldn't have lost his job. I mean, he. Right. To me, I think it was it was a it was to me it was the way the roster was constructed. Uh, we mentioned earlier with with free agency and the draft, they just mm-hmm. missed on too many players, and it's hard to overcome that. Eli Manning's a very good quarterback, probably will be a Hall of Famer someday. But uh, when you miss on a, a variety of draft picks, especially on defense, it's hard to overcome that. I mean, even when you get the quarterback right, I mean, you, you, you know, again, it's why I said at the top here with the Giants. The reason why they got involved in free agency is because they had to. They didn't. Right. They need to get this thing going again. Now, you um, when you when you look at at the Giants and you, you talk about the quarterback and all that stuff, the clicking with McAdoo is is that did that force the Giants' hand? Because there's there were teams looking at McAdoo and, and maybe thinking about offering him a head coaching job. Is that why they they had to make the move? I think the Eagles. The thought was around the NFL that if McAdoo took that interview with the Eagles, it might have been on that Wednesday, he would have gotten the job. Right. And the Giants knew this, I believe. That's mm-hmm. kind of what people believe. And they felt they had to offer him the job. Or, you know, if he took that interview, they could lose him. And then that's where Hugh Jackson might have played a part and in, in, in not take the, the Browns job. But it never got to that. Uh, it was very interesting. You got Mike Shanahan interviewing uh, at that time with the 49ers. John Filippo interviewed with the 49ers. He actually started his career with the Giants, uh, a quality, quality control coach. It's really interesting how one move begets another move in the National Football League with coaching searches. That's it's actually uh, this time around what happened. Adam Kaplan joining us, 104.5 The Team, your home for New York sports. Uh, we, we are the home for the Jets in the Capital Region. And uh, the the crapshoot question of the of the offseason is Ryan Fitzpatrick. Will he sign? Is he going to be a Jet? I think when it really counts at training camp, he'll be there. This guy's a veteran. He's 33 years old. He knows how to handle it. The, the last I had heard several weeks ago, and nothing I've heard since then has changed. I think he's still, I think he's still offered him eight million a year, uh, based on some of the contracts are out there. First of all, Chase Daniels, who will be Eagle, Eagles' uh, number two quarterback, he, he's getting seven million a year. Right. Fitzpatrick put up 31 touchdowns last season. So obviously, if you're Fitzpatrick, you you can't take less than 10. Now he's only had the one big year, which is I think is the Jets' argument. We're not going to give you 
15, 16, 17 million a year. There's got to be a middle ground. Once they hit that middle ground, look at the deal done. Right now, there's not a middle ground. That's the problem. And this thing seems to be dragging on with Fitzpatrick. I mean, he really doesn't have a lot of other options. He has zero options. No options. This is my prediction. If the Jets didn't draft a quarterback in the first round, and I kept telling people they're not yep. drafting Paxton Lynch no matter what you heard, uh, they, they didn't think that he could be their quarterback of the future. Now, I didn't know really until about two or three hours before the draft that they were high on Christian Hackenberg. He pulled the trigger in the second round, but no one's thinking he's going to be ready to play this season. Right. It's Ryan Fitzpatrick. The coaches who I've spoken with, feel it's, they want Fitzpatrick back badly. But the front office, they have to work around the money. Coaches don't. I mean, they right. just want their player back. So that's what it's going to come down to, the contract. And because of leverage here, the Jets have all of it. Now, I shouldn't say all of it, most of it, because he could uh, yeah. simply not sign. Right. Now, the other part of this is, are they happy enough to go ahead with Juno Smith going forward? Now, they will tell you they are per, you know, publicly. Right. The, the coaches don't want to go with Juno Smith if they could avoid it. Uh, they're back with him for a second straight year. And remember, Fitzpatrick was acquired in a trade for one reason. It was Chan Gelly's system. He was supposed to be the backup. Who knew he would have a monster year like this or last season? But Juno Smith, they'd like, again, not to go there if they don't have to. But he is in the second year of their system. And if he's got to play, he'll play. So, Adam, if if Fitz does sign, who's odd man out? They're not carrying four quarterbacks, right? I know that's that's the question now. Uh, Br- Bryce Petty obviously doesn't have much of a future. I mean, that that's just. I had teased... but he's learning from Madden. How about that? <laughs> that was that was crazy. I saw that. Now, now here's the thing with Bryce Petty. Good good character kid, good athlete, good arm, extremely raw. Comes from that Baylor system. Mm-hmm. I had a, I had an offense coordinator who I knew very well tell me. Absolutely should not play the first two seasons. And he, he, In fact, in last year's draft, he told his general manager, if we draft him, do not w- just understand we don't think he'll be able to play for a long time. We're going to have a veteran who needs to start at least for two seasons. So Bryce Petter is a project. That, that's right. the way he's, he's very raw. He doesn't even factor in. This is all speculation here. I mean, right, just obviously, talking. yeah. But in, in August, once let's just assume Fitz is going to be back. I think they try to move him. I think I think I think by the end of training camp, there's got to be a team that likes him. I know he dropped to the fir- fourth round, but he's got ability. He can't throw the football. He's just raw. Someone's got to want him. So make a prediction for us. Uh, Jets finish the year. How many wins? How many losses? Six last year. I would say most of the, the top players are back, except for Cromarty. I would probably say I'm going to go with ten and six again. Patriots. Really. Now, now, I know with Brady's situation as it is right now, unless he's able to get a stay of the suspension until next year, he's going to miss the first four games. But you, you got to think they're going to be good enough to be 2-2 two and two at the yeah. that time. Yeah, they, they go in such roles. Yeah. I'm still going to pick the Patriots no matter what. Right. Uh, the, the problem with the Jets is Chris Ivory is no longer there, although I like Matt Forte. Defensively, they're not nearly as – they're not that good. Of a de- they're, they're good. They're, they're better than average, but – they're not as good as they should be. They're not that dominant defense. No, you're like no. I thought they were going to be. Jets. Todd Bowles is a really good head coach, by the way. Yeah. He's probably going to be a little bit better than I thought. But I didn't. I, I, I would expect in his defense to be better, but it's not his issue. It's a personnel issue. Uh, they, out, it was an outside linebacker issue. You're going to see Molden play this year uh, at one of the outside linebacker spots. They need to get more out of that position. And we'll see a cornerback how they do. All right, Giants. Yeah. Let's go, Giants. Oh, boy. There's so, <laughs> there's, there, there, there's that whole division. But if I had to pick now, I'd pick the Redskins. They were only nine and seven in a terrible division. I I, I think the Giants are seven nine eight eight. I I, I don't see it. I, they don't they they don't they have like so many running backs, but they don't really have a starter. Jennings is not good enough. He's a very good backup, but he's not good enough to be a starter. There's no one they could depend on, on the run. They, they just don't run it well enough. What is Victor Cruz going to give them? Right. We don't know. He hasn't played. I was at that game in Philly. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is it, October of, of 2014. It's been all. It, it's right now a year and a half. And it'll be almost two years by the time the season starts. You don't know about him. Defensively, all listen, we talked about Olivier Vernon. Defensive tackle, they're great. Lo, love uh, love Harrison, uh, David Harrison, who they, uh, they, added, they added defensive tackle. The cornerback-wise, they're in much better shape, at least for starters. But we'll see how everybody fits in. Linebacker-wise, when was the last time they drafted a really blue-chip linebacker? I mean, I can't remember the last time. I mean, you got to go what all the way back. You got to go to LT, right? right? I mean, that's <laughs> uh, Carl Banks. I mean, yeah. you look at all those guys that they had in then. But I, I would, although they like uh, Devon Kennard, but right. he, he was hurt last season. Uh, they've missed on too many linebackers. They needed they needed to strengthen that that group there. But I just think they have so many questions. I think Philly is interesting. I was at their mini camp, uh, their OTA camp. 
practice on, on Tuesday. They're an interesting team. They're, they're, they have a little bit better talent than I thought, but their problem is also like the Giants' secondary. Mm-hmm. Don't know what you're going to get from that. That is cornerback. Right now, 